Rogers. We are live here in the Dominican Republic. It is sunset, sunrise rather, here. And I just wanted to say a word of prayer. Uh, listen, God is good. It's, it's doing a little raining right now, but I wanted to be out here when the sun began to, to rise. And we're believing God today for the victory. So if you would just join us in a word of prayer, I would greatly appreciate it. Let's bow. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as we stand in the midst of your creation, Father, we want to say thank you for another day, another chance, another opportunity to tell you thank you. Thank you, O oh God, for allowing us to know that all things yet still work together for the good to them that love you and are the called according to your purpose. Father, we ask right now in the name of Jesus, if you would move by your spirit concerning your people, the world is in disarray. The world is in a dismal decline. And we're asking right now, God, in the name of Jesus, if you would allow your blood to do what doctors cannot do. Allow your blood, God, to do what nurses and teachers and judges cannot do. Allow your blood to recover the saints. Allow your blood to restore and revive those that are in need of a desperate change. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we pray this prayer today, we ask God that you would speak a word of life concerning your people. God, there's somebody right now, somewhere, somehow, that needs a breakthrough. And I'm asking you, Lord, right now, that you would begin to move by your spirit concerning them. Oh God, we need a touch from you, and we can't make it without you. Father, we're asking right now that you would allow the blood to touch every system of the body the circulatory system, the reproductive system, the respiratory system, the circulatory system. God, allow the blood to touch the neurolysis and the neurolysis of the body. Touch the nervous system, God. Touch the, the, the thyroid and the parathyroid glands of the body. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, allow the blood to trickle down to every orifice now, God. Touch the eye gate, the ear gate, the nose gate, the mouth gate and every area, God, that the body has been affected, God, due to sin. Father, we know that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But Lord, can't nobody do us like you can. And so, Father, right now in this moment, we're asking, God, that you would bombard and supersede the plan and the strategy of the devil. Allow us, God, to have the victory over everything that the devil thought he was going to do. God, we need a touch from you right now. We need a touch, God, that will bring us out of this loaded bar place, this place of low-mindedness, this place of deception, this place of sorcery and schemes of the devil. God, nobody can do us like you can, and we're asking you right now to move by your spirit. God, somebody on this Sunday morning needs a touch from you. Somebody on this Sunday morning needs an answer from you. There's somebody, God, today under the sound of my voice that needs a, a reviving of their spirit. And Father, can't nobody touch us like you can. And so, Father, we give over to your Holy Ghost right now. We give over to the power of God. We give over to the anointing God that destroys every yoke of bondage. Father, we need a move of God. Father, we need you to heal and deliver. We need you to save and set free. Father, we're asking, we're pleading, we're pleading the blood right now. We're applying and appropriating the blood of the Lamb right now in the name of Jesus. Father, as the sun begins to peak over the horizon, we're asking God that you would allow the miracles to come into our lives. We're asking you, God, now to allow breakthroughs and blessings to overtake us. God, we need a touch from you. We need a move from you, God. Lord, there's nobody in this world, hallelujah, that can transform our low mind. Nobody in this world, God, that can, can bring us up from the miry pit. Can't nobody us, God, uh, change our heart but you. Father, it was the psalmist, David, King David, that said, Lord, create within me a clean heart and renew a right spirit. God, and we're asking right now, God, eh, in the name of Jesus, God, if you would transform the mind, renew the mind, revive the mind, restore the mind in the name of Jesus. Father, we're thanking you right now for all that you have done, all that you're doing, 
and all that you plan to do. God, we are asking for a miraculous move of the Holy Ghost. We're asking you, God, to begin to speak up into the minds of the believers. Not only the minds of the believers, but those that are all over the world that need a touch from you. God, there's somebody right now that's asking for power. There's somebody right now, God, that's asking for a rejuvenation. There's somebody right now, God, that can't make it without you. And I'm one of those, God, I can't move without you. I can't talk without you. I can't live without you. I can't even think without you. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, as we pray this prayer today, we ask, God, this prayer would go into the four winds of the heaven. God, allow it to touch the north, the south, the east, and the west. Allow every area, every participle of this miracle and this blessing and this prayer to reach God the nations in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for a kingdom mindset, a mindset that goes beyond just the four walls of the church. Ain't nothing wrong with the four walls of the church, but Father, we're asking in the name of Jesus that you would touch the lost at any cost. Save them, God. Revive them. Renew them. Restore them in the name of Jesus. Father, we're thanking you for miracles. We're thanking you for signs. We're thanking you for wonders that you promised them that believe you. And Father, we believe you today. We're trusting you, God, for bringing us out of this muck and this mire. God, we're asking you right now in the name that is above every name, in the name that still has power, in the name that still has authority, our rose of Sharon, our bright and morning star, our lily of the valley, our wheel in the middle of a wheel, Jehovah Jireh, Yahweh, El Elyon, Elohim, we invoke you and we invite you this morning. We invite you into our hearts and into our minds, God. We're asking you, Lord, to move by your spirit. We call you this morning, Lord of all. We call you this morning, our paraclete. We call you this morning, our helper, our advisor, our beginning and the end, the offer and the omega. We're asking you now, God, in the name of Jesus, to send a fresh wind. Send a wind, God, that will restore the mind. Send a wind, God, that will restore the heart. Send a wind of refreshing, God, that will restore the body in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, there's somebody right now that needs a touch from you. There's somebody right now, God, this morning that needs an answer from you. And God, we cannot recommend anybody else but you. You are our answer. You are the answer for the world today. Father, I plead the blood right now over every listener, every believer, every one God that may be going through in a way they don't understand. But oh God, in the name of Jesus, as we pray this prayer this morning, God, as the sun is tiptoeing over the horizon, I'm asking God in the name of Jesus, if you would allow a refreshing to come now. Oh God, that you would allow a breakthrough to come now. Oh God, that you would allow your answer and your miracle to touch us now oh god this morning we need a touch from you the world god is in a dismal decline they don't know how they're going to make it out of this situation oh god but you are our answer you said behold i stand at the door and knock if any man open the door i'll sup with them father we need you to come in we need you to come in and sup with us now oh god we are asking you now for miracles we're asking you now god for signs and and wonders oh god save the world today save us god because we need to be touched from you we need a touch we need a blessing we need a miracle we thank you lord even right now for those great miracles that are on the way god there's some lost soul there's somebody god dealing with hunger there's somebody god this morning that's dealing with homelessness there's somebody this morning, oh God, that's dealing with abuse. Father, as I pray this prayer, I pray that the hungry would be fed. I pray, God, those that are naked will be clothed. Those, God, that are hungry, those that are naked, those that have no shelter will be covered. Those, dear God, that are in prison will receive the light of the Lord and cry, what must I do? to be saved. 
Father, we stand in your glory. We stand in your promise. We stand knowing that you are God and beside you there is none other. Father, we thank you for this moment of prayer. We thank you, God, that prayer is the key and that faith opens the door. Father, we're asking you right now to hear this prayer. Allow it to reach the balconies of heaven. Allow this prayer, God, to supersede the will of the enemy. Father, we're thanking you even right now for your power. Father, as we stand in awe of your glory, we thank you for being God all by yourself. Thank you for being our answer. Thank you for being our way maker. Thank you for being our healer. Thank you for being everything we need. You're a great God. You're a holy God. You're a righteous God. And we worship you. And there's nobody like you. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to know that man ought always pray and not faint. So, Father, here we are on another part of the world, a part of the creation, a part of your power. God, as we stand on the shores of the Dominican Republic, not only that we ask that you would touch America, but that you would touch the entire world. Allow the world to feel the result of the power of prayer. Allow the world, God, to be touched through the power of the blood. Father, we apply and appropriate the blood of the Lamb right now. We apply and appropriate the blood over every orifice of the body. Allow the blood to do what doctors and nurses cannot do. Allow the blood to do what medicine cannot do. Allow the blood to do what the mind cannot do. Psychiatrists and those that are dealing with counseling, God, psychologists and counselors, allow the blood to get in every participle of the mind, even the zygomatic part of the brain. Father, we're thanking you even right now for the blood because the blood still works. The blood still has power. Father, we thank you for your blood now. We apply and appropriate the blood of the Lamb. God, you said, when I see the blood, I'll allow death to pass over. Father, we're thanking you even right now that there is no weapon formed against us that will be able to prosper. And every tongue that should rise against us, it will be condemned. For this is the promise, this is the heritage that you have promised the saints. So, Father, as we stand on this sand believing you, oh God, transform our mind into a mind like Christ, a prevailing mind, a mind that says, not my will, but thy will be done. Father, we're thanking you even right now for your power. We're thanking you right now for strength. We're thanking you, God, now for the power of the Holy Ghost that rests with us. God, as we pray this prayer, we're asking you, Lord, to heal for you to deliver and for you to set free. There may be one today, God, that say, what must I do to be saved? Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Father, we pray this prayer now in faith, believing that all things yet work together for the good to them that love you and are the called according to your purpose. Father, moved by your spirit today, in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're honoring God for the victory here in the Dominican Republic, right here on the sand shore of this Dominican Republic. We are honored of God to be able to pray, hallelujah, here at sunset. Thank you for joining us. God bless you and we're praising God for you. Whatever you have need of, whatever you're asking the Lord for, whatever you're asking God to, to touch you, God is able, hallelujah. He can do what no other power can do. So glad to have you on, Pastor Lee, hallelujah. We are honoring God today. We are blessing God today for being God all by himself. He's still a miracle worker. He's still a water walker. He still can do what no other power can do. Hallelujah. And guess what? We still believe God. 
we still believe. Do you, do you believe God? Do you believe God in spite of what it looks like? In spite of what it sounds like? Can you look past your problem? If you can look past your problem and get to the other side, hallelujah. I'm believing God for your other side experience. Hallelujah. Jesus was with his disciples. Hallelujah. And he said, we got to get to the other side. He said, go before me. And as he would, uh, uh, as they went before him in that great lake and that great storm came on the water, the Bible said Jesus was in a mountain apart to pray. Hallelujah. The disciples were on a ship in the middle of the lake, in the middle of the sea. Hallelujah. And while they were there in the middle of the sea, the Bible said a great storm arose. Where they were positioned, it was known to have a lot of storms. While, while they were where they were, it was known to be a, a, a valley or a bowl where storms accumulated. But we're talking about fishermen right now. We're talking about those that were comfortable with a net, those that had the ability to maneuver in water. Ah, but they had never seen a storm like this. Have you ever been in a storm you have never been in before? Have you ever experienced a storm uh, uh, like never before? Well, that's where they were. These disciples, these faith walkers, these tongue talkers. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Uh, uh, these were believers. These were ones that walked one-on-one -on -one with Christ Jesus. And here they were in the middle of a storm. Hallelujah. Have you ever been in a storm without Jesus? Mm. Have you ever been in a, in a tough place without the Lord? Have you ever been in a storm that you were confused by? A storm that not only messed up your mind, but it began to touch every area of your body mentally, physically, emotionally, financially, relationally, spiritually. They were, on, they were in a storm. Uh, but Jesus said, we must get to the other side. Jesus included himself. And listen, you got to learn how to hear Jesus when he speaks. Hallelujah. There's a, there's a, there's a caveat to it. Hallelujah. There is a, there's a catch to it. That when Jesus said, we must get to the other side, he included himself in the problem. And even though Jesus wasn't with them at the moment, every word that he says is coming to pass. Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor is he the son of man that he should repent. God is speaking some things and you got to learn how to listen closely. Are you hearing me today? Jesus was in the mountain apart to pray. That gives us an ability to know that we got to rest sometime. Hallelujah. And I'm resting right now. Uh, my rest may be different from your rest, but we got to learn how to rest and revive and recover and rejuvenate. And so Jesus was in a mountain apart to pray. While he was praying, I could imagine him seeing them going through the storm that they were in. Can I tell you something? And here it is. Jesus is always concerned about you. You may be in a storm, but he's concerned about you. While he was praying, while he was reviving, while he was, he was restoring himself through the power of God, they were in a storm. Hallelujah. Same thing with Jesus right now. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. The Bible is saying that, that he's in that heavenly place and he's praying for us. And I want you to know even right now, you may be in the storm of your life, but you're not in it by yourself. They were in the middle of the storm and, and Jesus came walking out on the sea. Can I tell you something? He's waiting to do some impossible things in your life. He's waiting to handle some impossibilities in your life. All you have to do is give him the room to walk. Hallelujah. There's somebody right now that don't know how you're going to make it from day to day. But give him some room to walk. Give Jesus the ability to, to bombard your, your situation. Give him the ability to handle your circumstance. Give him the ability to be God. Because he can. But you got to let him in. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open the door, I'll come in 
and sup with him. Well, they were here in the middle of the sea, tossed to and fro by the winds that were contrary and boisterous. Have your winds ever become contrary? Have your waves become boisterous? Are your children acting a fool? Is your job getting on your nerves? Husband ain't acting right. Wife is topsy-turvy, telling you to curse God and die like Job's wife did. Job said, you sound crazy. But Jesus is looking for an opportunity to come and walk out on the storm that you've been in. Now, I dare you right now to give him some room to walk. I dare you right now to give him an ability to touch your heart, touch your mind, touch your soul, touch your spirit. Here we are at sunrise, believing God for your life. Long story short, Jesus begins to walk on the water. They thought it was a ghost. These disciples, man, these faith walkers, these disciples that walked so close with Jesus thought he was a ghost. They had never seen anything like that before. But Jesus came against everything they thought they had going on. And that's what he wants to do for you. He wants to come against every thought you think you've enclosed him by and blow your mind with the possibility. The fact that Jesus began to walk on something that man said was a liquid. God made a solid. Jesus begins to walk on the water and every step that Jesus took, the water held him up by. When Jesus walks out on the water, the water has no other choice than to obey the will of its creator. When Jesus is involved, all rules are out. When Jesus is involved, cancer has to go. When Jesus is involved, demons have to flee. What's your condition? What's your storm? What is it in your life that you need Christ to walk on for you? Hallelujah. He, he, he's still able. He, he's still able. The Bible days are no different than these days. There were wars and rumors of wars then. People needed salvation then. People needed deliverance then. And it's no different now. Just as the sun is peeking over the horizon, the sun, Jesus Christ the Son, wants to come into your life. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if you would confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Jesus came walking on the water. They thought it was a ghost. It was one that was in the boat. One crazy one, one outspoken one that said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. And I want to tell you even right now that if you would just ask the Lord, ask him, can I do that too? Can I walk on water too? Can I, can I get out of this limited mindset? Can I, can I get out of this, this defeated mindset too? Can I get out of the boat of fear and walk on the water of faith too? What did Jesus tell Peter? He said, come. Peter began to walk out of the ship and because Christ was able to walk on the, the firm foundation of creation, he's calling you out of that boat too. He's calling you into the storm, not out of the storm. What? But the storm is raging all around me. The, 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 the people are treating me all kinds of ways. No, he's not calling you out of the storm. He's calling you into the storm. Because when you've got Jesus in the storm with you, everything about the storm makes no sense. 
Jesus will confuse the storm. <laughs> the storm was sent to confuse you. But when Jesus is in the storm with you, the power of God confuses the storm you're in. I dare somebody to believe God today. Peter walks out on the word. As he walks out on the word, he loses focus. He begins to slip. He begins to drown. Reaching up, he says, Lord, save me. That's what I want to share with you right now. At any point you feel, like the storm will become overwhelming again. All you have to do is open your mouth and say, Lord, save me. The Bible goes on a little further in Romans 10, 9. It says, whosoever calleth on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you need salvation, if you need a miracle, if you need an answer, if you need power, if you need strength, I want to recommend Jesus. He's a storm chaser. He's a storm stopper. And can I tell you something? The word that Jesus gave the disciples, even at the beginning, let's go to the other side. He has an inclusive ministry. He said, whosoever will, let them come. Them is all inclusive. All inclusive. That means if you're old, if you're young, if you're poor, if you're rich, if you're large, if you're small, if you're black, if you're white, Jesus has a message for you today. And that message is all things are possible if you only believe. So as we have shared a word for you today, we have prayed into the sunrise here in the Dominican Republic. We're thanking God for your life today. We're thanking God for all that you are believing God for. The Bible tells us in his word that nothing shall be impossible to them that believe. My question to you today is, do you still believe God? In spite of all that you've been through, do you still believe God? In spite of the divorce, do you still believe God? In spite of the abandonment, do you still believe God? In spite of the foreclosures, do you believe God? In spite of the deaths and the separations of your life, do you still believe God? There's a scripture that says, nothing shall separate me from the love of God. Not height, not depth, not angels, not demons, not things present or things to come. Listen, when you've got a relationship with Christ Jesus, when you know his track record, I don't care what comes. I don't care what goes. When you love him and you've got a relationship with him, can't nobody do you like the Lord can. And I want to encourage you right now. Keep holding on. Keep hanging in there. Weeping may endure for a night. But as the scripture says, joy is coming in the morning. Thank you for joining me here on this Sunday morning, right here in the Dominican Republic, here at Sunrise Service. Glory to God. <laughs> We're believing God today for you. We're believing God for you. Oh my goodness. Whatever you need, God is able. Can I tell you the last part of that story? Peter was sinking. There's a songwriter that says, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, sinking deeply, very stained within, sinking to rise no more. I like this part, but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry and from the waters he lifted me. Now safe. Safe am I. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, it was love that lifted me. Not, not the conditional love of man, 
but the unconditional agape love of God. That's what's keeping me. That's what's covering me. That's what's helping me. The love of God. Do you have his love today? Is the love of God in operation in your life? Hallelujah. When you have the love of God, nothing else come, can, everything can come and go. But as long as, listen, there was somebody that said, if I lost everything and still had Jesus, I've got enough to start all over again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I want to encourage you right now. Don't you give up. Don't you give in. Don't you throw in the towel. Hallelujah. You can't quit because there's more. As simple as that. You can't give in because there's more for you to do. You can't throw in the towel because the towel will be thrown back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Be encouraged today and know that the scripture is true when it says that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them that are the called according to his purpose. Can I tell you, Ashley, the last part of the story? They got to the other side. Will you? Will you get to the other side? Will you get to the other side? That's a great question today, isn't it? Jesus and the disciples got to the other side. Will you? Will you get to the other side? If you don't know Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sin, you will not get to the other side. He said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus said, I am the way the truth and the life and I want you to know even right now that Jesus Christ is your way he is your paraclete he is the prerequisite to getting to the other side heaven and earth shall pass away but his word is going to stand forever hallelujah some trust in horses some trust in chariots but I'll trust in the Lord I'm encouraging you right now to believe God concerning your situation Proverbs 3 and 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your navel and morrow to your bones. Honor the Lord with your increase, that your barns will be plentiful, and the rain will drop down its dew. God bless you. Thank you for joining me this morning again. I love you with the love of the Lord and there's nothing you can do about it. That being said, repeat after me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Go in peace and sin no more. God bless you. We love you. And there's nothing you can do about it.
I don't know about you, but just like this sun got up, you can get up too. I feel, I feel kind of good this morning. I feel like I can make it. I feel like whatever it was that 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 I could not come through that God is able to see us through anything oh, yeah. here we are giving God glory right here whatever the circumstance is whatever the situation is you got to put your faith into action. I dare you. I dare you. I dare you to give God glory. I dare you to give God praise right there. Come on. <laughs> Isn't he able? Isn't it worthy? Hallelujah. Come on. <laughs>